This is what chi is, or one form. Turns out there are many forms of chi, but this could be one form of chi is electrons zipping around in the meridians. The, uh, the classical descriptions are their vertical meridians um, called jing and horizontal meridians called lo, and the lo meridians have branches and, and conceptually they can branch and touch the integrins and reach right inside of every cell. So this is an electronic network that goes everywhere in the body. If you look at collagen in the electron microscope, you see it's a band, it has this banded pattern. A very distinctive characteristic, and this arises because the molecules stack together, they're offset, there's a, and there's little gaps uh, between the ends of the molecules. So it creates this banded pattern that shows up when you stain it for the electron microscope. Here's cross-section. Here you can see the collagen uh, bundles, collagen fibers coming out toward you, cut and cross section, a fibroblast cell that makes a connective tissue. So here is the here is a tendon uh, or a, a collagen bundle, a bundle of these fibers, and now comes the secret of life. And here's this is I'm not sure about this diagram, by the way. Um, there's a lot of research on, con on determining the water content of collagen and where the water is. This particular diagram, this is a cross-section like, like this. So this is one collagen fibril, and this is another one, and this is another one. And in this particular paper, they've taken the wet weight of the collagen and determine how many water molecules have to be in there, and it looks like the waters are in hexagonal arrays, and there are three of them for each. Now this is just at one level, of course this goes down, uh, you have to envision this in three dimensions. Um, I'll tell you why I'm excited about this. I think that this is a secret, this is this is going to answer many of the mysteries that we have wondered about for a long time. I'll explain why I think that's the case. Here's what happens in rolfing and probably in yoga and in other complementary. This is one of the things that can happen is the collagen fibers can get kinked. They get dehydrated, they get dense, and they, this happens because of holding patterns, emotional patterns, whatever they might be because of injury, and so on. And they get kinky, and the muscle gets shortened, chronically shortened. And if you can melt the ground substance, the kinks release, and the collagen lengthens, and the muscle lengthens. And so you probably notice sometimes after a class a yoga class that everybody looks a little taller or a little more balanced or more flexible, that things lengthen and, and, and parts of the musculoskeletal system can work better. And this was what Dr. Rolf was doing. And it turns out it's not that hard to melt this um, ground substance. It, it turn, can turn hard, but it's with the slightest input of energy it can fall apart and release and relax and allow the muscle to lengthen. So the body can be balanced in the gravity field. This is the Harvard University chart for grading body mechanics. These are progressively better, although the experienced body worker looks at this one, which is supposed to be good, and sees that there's some tension in it. You can draw a gravity line down through the body, and then this is Dr. Rolf's model of, and she said gravity is the therapist, and I thought about that for a long time. It sounded sensible, but what did, what's she talking about? And I finally figured it out. If you can get your body organized this way, in a, get it balanced, moving with your body balanced, walking is therapeutic, it's good for you. It's not 
Gravity is no longer tearing you down. It's giving you support and lift. And it's good for you. It's good for all the organs and systems. So gravity is the therapist. The Power of Balance, a book by a Rolfer. And as I studied these things for the Rolfers, I found that everybody was interested. So when I started looking at the biophysics of Rolfing, I found that just about every school of complementary and alternative therapies was interested in these ideas, could use these ideas, and so I have now visited and given workshops and lectures for just about every school of therapy you can think of. Tensegrity is a model that enables us to understand what is going on here. This is a sculpture, and you can see that it enables the structure to extend way far away from its base of support, like this. I can do this because I have tensegrity. I have a tensegrous structure. And the, the original work was uh, by a, a sculptor, Kenneth Snelson, who made these amazing structures. Buckminster Fuller did a lot of work on tensegrity. Marvin Solit in Cambridge, Massachusetts, uh, developed a procedure called the Great Unwinding. Go to the web and look up the Great Unwinding. It's an incredible story of what he has put together. Donald Ingber at Harvard Medical School has worked out the tensegrity aspects of the cell. Steve Levin has, has a website on biotensegrity, uh, very useful information. Roger Penrose draws the structure of space like a tensegrity network, he calls it a spin network. And Tom Flemons constructs models of the body um, based on tensegrity. For example, this one, and this is an amazing model. This is a complete tensegrity skeleton. It's got the bones and the connective tissues, and it can walk, sit, stretch, and contort. It will stand self-supporting with all of the compression elements, the bones, floating. Emphasis on floating in the web of tensions that is woven around it from top to bottom. All of the bo bones are supposed to float. We are not designed to be a stack of bricks, as we learn when we study anatomy. We are not a stack of bl bricks. And when tensegrity breaks down, we start to have joint problems. And a, and a lot of the therapies are successful by putting length into the system and lifting the bones off each other, which is their natural state of affairs. So Ida Rolf said this. She said, we're not truly upright. We are only on our way to becoming upright. This is a metaphysical and evolutionary consideration. One of the jobs of a Rolfer is to speed that process. Wow. Speed the evolutionary process. Now there is a concept. And this is where Mari and I have some interesting discussions about where are we in our evolution? Are we evolving? Where, are we, where did we come from? Where are we headed? Where is the golden age? Is it close before us? What's going on? Evolution. I'm a teleologist. I want to know how things work. I want to know how evolution works. How does evolution work? We don't know. How can we speed evolution? What are we talking about here? These are incredible concepts. But I'm not supposed to talk like this. Ever since uh, Francis Bacon, I am to deliberately avoid teleological explanations. I can't, uh, he's, he's not around anymore to pester me. And here's, for example, Buckminster Fuller. He said, if I need materials or personnel to accomplish evolution's ends, this is an idea that evolution has a, a direction, events will arrange themselves in the appropriate pattern. I like that. 